Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you about the fine folks from World Championship Blacksmith. The Edgewood WCB is kicking off here next week, and this guest, Travis Buck, is going to provide a lot of insight about the shoes and what it took to make them and what he's going to be looking for. So we hope you find this to be helpful for you in your upcoming challenges at the WCB contest. The sole focus is so you can become better and putting yourself in that environment will push you to an area that you didn't even know you had within yourself. The WCB is about holding on to tried and true methods of trimming, shoemaking, and most of all, fit. The goal is always to have the horse better off in the end. The failure to become efficient and skilled to whatever comes to their way that they can tackle. They're doing more than just putting on horseshoeing competitions. They're creating a community amongst us of the greatest hardworking folks that will step up and help you along the way. The WCB is putting on the greatest horseshoeing contests in the world, and we personally believe here at Forging Brains Podcast that it's important to test yourself and try to become better every day. So it's awesome to have the World Championship Blacksmiths sponsor the show. Help support them by going to their website, www.worldchampionshipblacksmiths.com, and buy some merch to show your support, and use code BRAINS for 10% off your order. It's not including contest or membership fees. All right, welcome everybody to another episode of Forge and Brains Podcast. I'm your host, Riley Kirkpatrick. Got my co-host, Gavin Cooper. And we got the man that everybody's probably wanting to hear some knowledge from right now, Mr. Travis Buck. Thanks for joining us, Travis. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah, man. Thank you. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. You're kind of like the the man of the hour, you know? The yeah, Edgewood's, it seems like it. Edgewood's coming up and like... Are you getting a bunch of messages from people and stuff, trying to figure stuff out? Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> trying to help them out as much as I can, you know? Yeah. Um, was well, a big cool. one the I aluminum mean, like I, shoe? Yeah, I did that um, that little uh, pictorial thing on there. Uh, just mm-hmm. I got so many messages about it. It's like, well, I may as well just do something and uh, just save myself a lot of uh, typing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I seem to have good, uh, uh, good results. Like, people seem to like that so even like even if you type it all out it's still people aren't going to grab on to stuff the same as if you just go ahead and do the little pictures oh yeah yeah it always always has more to it people get to figure it out a little bit easier it's a good yeah it kind of like brings back to like what was like that loose shoe magazine when craig would kind of do that back before like the videos and stuff like that i thought those were pretty cool yeah no i agree it's something that people don't do as much anymore at all. It's like, uh, it seems like even just five, six years ago, there were more people taking like step by step pictures and posting them on on Facebook, and now yeah. it's like pretty much it's pretty much gone. Yeah, it's also funny though. Like uh, people now, I don't want to say like, but Craig has slacked off a little bit. When I first got into WCB, Craig made a YouTube video on every single shoe. Yeah. Yeah. On how to make yeah, it. I think of that too. Like, we were kind of like babied along there for, for a while there. Oh, it was completely. nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's like if you couldn't figure out a shoe, it's like there's at least a way to do it. Yep. Yeah, it at least got you started and then like you'd go ahead and then it was also a time where they would the clinician or the judge would do a demo the night before the contest and fuck yep. your head fuck your head all up oh yeah <laughs> it's like <laughs> you would get there you're like oh that's not how i did that whatsoever <laughs> it was oh yeah rough. it was rough yeah. yeah so travis man let's uh it'd be nice to kind of hear about your upbringing and stuff uh your dad's sure. a horseshoer as well I know that your dad, Doug. Yep. So, did you grow up with horseshoeing in mind? Uh, I kind of always liked to be around horses and stuff. Um, when I was young, my dad sent me to like a couple like uh, a riding schools and stuff like that for in the in the summers. And uh, honestly, like I hated it. I hated riding. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I like being around the horses and stuff like that, but like that part of it being that high off the ground wasn't really for me. Uh, I think it was, uh, I think maybe around grade eight or something like that. I was really big into guitar, still kind of am. Yeah. Um, and, uh, they're not cheap and I have very expensive tastes on that kind of stuff. So, well, how <laughs> else am I going to make money? I just started going to work with them and, uh, just pulling shoes, sweeping floors, 
trimming some back feet, stuff like that. So I did that for a summer, uh, a couple of summers actually. And then, yeah, definitely started taking a, a liking to it. What's your and, genre uh, of music of choice that you like to play? Uh, just like a lot of like old rock and roll. That's kind of like what I listen to a lot of like a Led Zeppelin bands like that. Hell but yeah. uh, actually when I was in school, not really many people my age listened to that kind of stuff. So I was kind of like stuck playing a lot of like punk rock and uh, a lot of like metal and stuff like that. Whatever was, I could find other people that would want to play it, right? A lot Man. of corn. Uh, <laughs> a lot of like Slayer and stuff like that. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I like corn and stuff like that. But yeah, it was definitely like a lot of like thrash metal and like heavy stuff, eighties hardcore <laughs> punk and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. You don't really <laughs> need to even know how to play guitar for a lot of that punk stuff. You know, you learn like three chords and that's all you got to <laughs> learn. <laughs> that's my type of stuff. You right do there. any like guitar <laughs> solos like Slasher out there? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm into, you know? Like I did yeah. take like lessons for a long time and stuff. So like I do kind of like know my scales and stuff like that. But uh, it wasn't really uh, used very much. Uh, yeah, playing a lot of punk and stuff. It's so it's so funny because it's like meeting you now. I would never think like oh, I had that no guy. Idea. That guy rocks <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and then like beforehand, I always go through like the guy that we're gonna have on. I'll always kind of like snoop through their Facebook. And I yeah. went back not that long ago, and I was like, dude, I was just telling Gavin before. I was like, dude, Travis is like rocket like cigarette <laughs> still hanging from his mouth, jam, <laughs> jamming out, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah good times. You and Terry Dawkin could uh, be rocking and rolling together. Yeah, well, I do talk to, like, Terry when I do see him, like, about music a bunch and stuff like that. And I think it's, like, really cool that he's, like, still going out there and gigging and stuff like that. Like, I haven't done, like, a live gig since, like, the end of high school. Um, so I think it's pretty cool that he's still going out and playing in bands and stuff like that. And uh, doing what he likes to do, you know? Instead of, like, just having, a, like, a hobby basement level, he's actually kind of going out there and doing it, right? Yeah. Nerve wracking. Do you think that you'll, you want to go do that again? Like go and do gigs again? Um, it'd be kind of like hard to find like a bunch of people to get, a, uh, get together with and keep practices and stuff like that. Especially like with our schedule, it can be like all over the place. Right. Like yeah. I think most of those people have like normal jobs and they can set out practices and stuff like that ahead of time. But, I'm sure if I really wanted to do it, I could probably make it uh, do. But right now, it's just definitely shooing a lot of horses and doing a lot of competitions and stuff like that. So you've been on multiple like farrier teams over the years. What do you think would be harder to coordinate, like a farrier team practice or getting the band together to practice? That would be a tough one. I, I think like maybe the shoeing might be a little easier because everyone's a little bit more serious about it. Especially when you get on a team, yeah. like you're gonna go there and there's gonna be like a score from like one to the bottom and you're gonna see where you are and your scores and stuff like that. With music, it's like, well, it's a you're little bit less here. Yeah, you're not really like one one to last, you know what I mean? It's a what's the word for it? Like more of an acquired taste. Somebody might like your stuff a little bit more or stuff like that, you know? Um, yeah, you you could have that one guy on the team that just sucks, and he's like, "No, dude, I'm really good. I'm really good. <laughs> People love me. Yeah, you guys aren't on my level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be hard. You're not like, dude. Look at your trim scores. Not going good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't really get that with a band. It's like, oh yeah, your drums need to be a lot better. You got like a six on this or whatever. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's good. So it's like yeah. at first shoeing horses was just like. You probably weren't that into it, really. You was just like a, a means to get some some cash flow, huh? Uh, like maybe at, at first. Uh, but then you know my dad would take me to, well, like I'd watch him compete a lot, like at Calgary and stuff like that. And I remember, like I think one of the first Calgarys I went to after starting to pole and clinch. Uh, like I'm like, man, this is like really cool, you know? Like I really want to do this, right? Like, and you see everyone getting their awards and stuff like that. There's a world champion. It's like, well. I'd like to be a world champion one day, you know? Like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's pretty cool, you know? How old were you, do you think, that first time you went and watched your dad at Calgary? Uh, well, the first time where I would actually like, kind of know what I was looking at, maybe like 14 or 15. I went there as like a small kid before, and I was just kind of like, you know, bored, kicking the dirt kind of thing, you know? 
Yeah. But I think, yeah, around <laughs> 14, 15 going there, and then like meeting a lot of these guys, like Marshall Isles and stuff like that. It was definitely a lot different then. So that was helpful in, you know, changing your opinion about horseshoe and then just by being around it and seeing it then, huh? Yeah, for sure. At that level. Yeah, definitely. So did you end up, after that, start making some shoes and stuff? Or go, going, like, a little bit more with your dad? Yeah, definitely. And, like, any time I'd have, like, a PA day or even if I was home, uh, I don't know, like, before my dad would be done, say if I got home, like, three after school and my dad was still going to be working till six, and if he was going by the house, he'd come pick me up or something like that. And I'd nice. go out with him. Yeah. So by the time you were done with high school – were you pretty much just set on you're gonna shoot horses? Yeah, pretty much. Like by the time I finished high school, I'd been working like every summer, like any chance I got. Um, when I was 16, like for that summer, uh, I think it was, might have been grade 10 going into grade 11. Um, my dad sent me out to work with Steve Dixon out west for a summer. Yeah. So I got to hang out with all those guys and and yeah, meet Ian Richie and James Finler and all these guys and uh, have Steve's sons and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, by the time I finished high school, like I pretty much knew what I wanted to do. Yeah. So you never officially had to like go through like a horseshoe in school then? He, your dad just no, by I mean, learning it, with your dad? Yeah, it probably would have helped a little bit on some of the anatomy and stuff like that, but you know, some of that uh you kind of pick up along the way a bit, but um yeah. I I would never tell anyone to not go to school, but by that point I kind of figured uh may as well just go right into it and that's kind of what I did. Yeah. No, and it's had you competed at all by the time you were out of high school, or I had done a handful, yeah. Have you? Yeah, a couple like novice, and uh, I might have got a, gotten into the intermediate a little bit by the time I was like, yeah, in grade twelve or so. Were you getting pretty into them, or were they just some more like something that was going on? Uh, well, I, like for the first while, I liked shoeing horses way more than forging. Uh, okay really like, like my first couple of shoes like i actually i did not like it at all uh it was like you know a two-hour endeavor to make a shoe uh, <laughs> like punching nail holes and pristling nail holes was like a 20 minute thing i'm like you know oh who God. would want to do this right dude uh, that, it's it's so funny to think back i remember at horseshoe in school spending all night like literally like you said two hours or like three hours making yeah. one shoe out a quarter yeah. inch thick. Steel. Yeah, yeah, quarter, yeah. Quarter, quarter, quarter by three quarter. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. dude. <laughs> punching it was so hard. Like I remember, like yeah. I, I would, I would put the four punch on like the end of it on my thigh, and so I could like pry, <laughs> yeah. pry it into the shoe, hoping Hold it didn't. It. Yeah, hoping it didn't yeah. jump around on me. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, now when you like you go to punch a nail hole, now and you're like, why was this ever so hard? But man, oh, yeah. it felt like you were trying to move the world over. <laughs> yeah, and then you go from that to like making match play shoes in like five minutes. It's nuts. Oh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's something I I like watching that at a contest. Like you notice the students around, and you'll see them watching the open guys, and like that's one of the, like it blows their mind just how smooth the guy runs a fuller. They're like, holy oh yeah, cow. I wish I could run a fuller like that. One day. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Or making a heel and turning the branch. You see everyone's like, oh. you know, like, yeah, and one you never could imagine we could do that, right? Yeah. You had to have some hope, though, that you had watched your dad and Steve and all of them make shoes that you're like, okay, this gets faster. One day, yeah. this, oh, this yeah. gets a little quicker. <laughs> it was definitely the summer I spent with Steve that, like, I made a, a decent amount of shoes and then obviously watched him. And he, back then, like, they were making everything at the horse concave uh so yeah you just watch the whole process and i would cut a piece of steel turn it in like a couple of heats and then go in and fit it most of the time with steve it was like you know first trip it was right there you know and uh justin fountain was working with him then and uh he was doing a lot of the work as well and yeah it was pretty cool to see all that i think he was like 19 at the time i was like 16 and just yeah just seeing him just yeah doing all this crazy stuff you know with this the forge and everything and yeah it was quite inspiring yeah so when when do you remember like your first contest that you were serious about uh it might have been like orangeville there might have been like a local contest in 2008 2009 but okay. like 
I was taking it serious, but like it was just yeah, kind of like a little local contest and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, it went okay, I think, but I, yeah. I don't really remember the results. But it, no, but it always seems like like everybody probably remembers one that they were like, "All right, I'm gonna actually practice for this one. Like, I'm not gonna just show up. I'm gonna try to get some stuff yeah. together." And it's like that you were kind of actually into it, you know. But at the yeah. time when you're you know at that level or whatever, like signing up for the intermediate like that is a big big step in your yeah. stepping stone of your career anyway so that is a big contest to you in the time right you know just yeah, like sure. looking back you're like oh it's just an intermediate but at the time that's a big one to go for yeah definitely you know? i mean none of this like maybe some of the trimming and stuff i kind of picked up fairly easy but making shoes was always actually a bit of a struggle for me um i remember uh I might have been like 2008 or something like that. There's that, uh, it's not around anymore, that Brooklyn Spring Fair. Uh, I think the WCB team, American team, had gone to it in 2018 or whatever. Anyways, when I did that, um, I think I wanted to, I jumped up to like intermediate, like before I was ready. And uh, I think they had like low numbers in the novice or vice versa, whatever. They, they I ended up competing in, in both divisions, novice and intermediate. And both of them, <laughs> I, I was last in all the shoes in the novice. I was last. <laughs> all the shoes in the intermediate. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That's hard. That's a hard one to like <laughs> swallow down. You're like, all right, that wasn't. That didn't go yeah. the way I wanted it to go. <laughs> and didn't good at anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm always like kind of big on like people who are coming up, like just to kind of like slow down and don't get ahead of yourself, you know? Because like you will have to if you want to progress, you will have to go back to that. Right. Yeah. The basics, obviously that everyone talks about. Yeah. Oh yeah. There becomes this like reality moment. Like even like everybody always wants to just jump up to like forge and heel cocks and stuff like that. And it's like, all right, man, but you still have to learn how to fuller. Like it's still, yeah. you still got to learn how yeah. to put nails down the middle of the shoe. So it's like, you can get excited yes. if you want, but it's like, you need to have those moments sometimes where you get kicked in the teeth and, kind of brought back down to your level and be like okay i'm not as good as i am so i gotta work on some things i've had lots of those moments <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's a hard uh, hard one to uh, face and accept that's why yeah. i've kind of always enjoyed it a little bit more than the guitar playing because it's always been a little bit more of a challenge for me yeah and like i don't know it's just there's just uh, you guys know that it's just nice to finish working Shoeing, it's just a nice feeling to make a whole bunch of shoes, just sit in your chair, have a nice cold beer. There's, there's just something that's, there's nothing like it, you know? Um, playing guitar, I don't really get that same, like, satisfaction. I don't know if that's the right word, you know, from it. Gratification so. of seeing an end product? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it, no, it's a total, like, expenditure. I don't, I don't know if that's the right word to use, but it is, like, I'm mentally spent, I'm physically spent. I yeah. feel good. Like you're like, man, yeah. I, like we did something today. Like it wasn't just a completely wasted day. And it's not something that is just like taken away from you afterwards. Like the shoes, I don't care what happened to them, but it's like the skill set that you gain from the day. You're like, man, we, we built, we built ourselves up a little bit. It was good. Yeah. And you have something in your hands to, to show for it. Right. Like, yeah. I mean, I could play guitar all day, like on a Saturday and, at the end of the day, I'll feel like I've done nothing all day, you know, like, <laughs> but I could even go to the shop for like a couple of hours on a, on a day off, make some, like even one shoe that's nice. And I'll have like that, that feeling that I actually did something that day, you know? Yeah. It's kind of funny. I think about it. It takes a special human being to want to like put themselves through like physical and dirt pain and torture almost. It seems like just by exhausting yourself, but you feel good at the end of it being like, I just put myself through hell but we did it. You know, it's an, oh, yeah. it's an interesting thing as a person. It, it is, but I, yeah, I think that's why it's like you go to a WCB though and it's like, we're all a little different, but there's all that one thing in all of us. <laughs> we like, like to suffer. Yeah, you yeah know? it's like all everybody, the sickness, you know? Yeah, everybody's there for the type two, <laughs> the type two fun that it's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, yeah. it sucks when we're in it, but afterwards it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's oh, it's yeah. cool to look back at. Because it's not easy. Yeah, definitely. No, it's not that's, easy. I yeah, that's it's it's funny too because I think that's what attracts people from like different worlds, you know, to the they're all kind of into the same thing, like guys in the hunting world and stuff like that. It's like 
well, they're just really into like suffering and looking back and thinking that it was cool. But it's a, uh, <laughs> like, it's a, that's the whole thing with WCB. It's like, it's the crowd that's like, no, yeah, we just slugged away. My shoulder is completely <laughs> dead. My hand is numb. Like, it's cool. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> like, we haven't eaten. Yeah, like the day. first year I was on the Canadian team was definitely like that because, like, I was, you know, 20 getting on the team. Don't, didn't really know much. Uh, everyone else on the team had a lot more experience than me. Uh, like Randy Broussard, he'd already been shooing for, you know, 10, 15 years. There's Tom Burnett. He'd been on the team a whole bunch of times. Aaron Steves. Uh, Dan Corkery was the reserve. And uh, I, I squeaked onto the team. And, yeah, the whole year was just kind of getting my ass kicked. And then when you finally finish up at Stonely, you're like, man, that was so cool. I want to do this again, you know? Let's talk about the greatest ferry supply house in the world. Well shot. It's not every day you have a business that's invested in you and wants to do the best they can do for you. The whole crew over at Wellshot are some of the nicest folks you'll meet in this trade. The owner, John Harshbarger, does so much for us in this trade by supporting as much events as he possibly can. I see Wellshot sponsoring so many events and help can't help but think that somebody cares. Every year they host the largest free clinic in the world put on by the World Championship Blacksmiths by allowing us all to come and learn and try to become better. Wellshot has everything you could possibly need in your farrier practice. It would probably take all day to list every product they provide, but whatever brand you use, they'll have it. Aside from products, they also carry all the top tools made by the best in our industry. So when you go to check out at www.wellshot.com, use code BRAINS and you'll receive a special gift in your order free of charge. Plus, that helps support us at Forge and Brains. Can't say enough good things about the folks at Wellshot. Still blows my mind that they can get away with $10 shipping anywhere in the continental U.S. And don't forget, they have basically every anvil that you could possibly need or want to use in supply. So go over there and check them out and use code BRAINS at checkout to help show your support. Thanks, everyone. So, yeah. <laughs> keep you coming back for more. But during it, you're just like, oh, man, I'll never do this again. <laughs> Especially, I imagine, like, going to Stoneleaf, it's like uh, so much went into that. And I, I, it probably doesn't catch up to you all the way till Stoneleaf. That you're like, man, this was such a whirlwind all the way through. You're like, but I just went to England for shoeing horses and swinging a hammer. Like, just go meet yeah. up with a bunch of other guys that are. And really, it's like, it's one of the funny things, too, that it's like, everybody's competing against each other but it's like you're everybody's pretty understood that you're competing against yourself there oh yeah yeah that you are just trying to beat what you thought you could do like and just like actually show up on the day that's a pretty hard thing to do it's it's a it's an interesting trade that's for sure i like it oh yeah i don't know really many other trades that would help each other out as much as we do like i don't know if it was might have been like the second or third years on the team uh, I think we were practicing at Paul Robinson's. Uh, and then when we get to Stonely, uh, I think they switched it up because it was supposed to be like on the Heinz, it was a three quarter, four quarter clip. But then they switched it up. They wanted like a mass low. And I was just, I didn't really, we'd never practiced one before. Yeah. I, just asked Paul, I just asked Paul, I'm just like, well, what do you measure for it? He told me exactly what, what he was going to do. And I just followed whatever he said. And yeah, it went on pretty sweet, you know? Because that's the contest where each country is like it's portrayed like each country's out for blood you know wanting to win but he was still yeah. willing to like help you guys out you know being from canada oh, yeah. or whatever it helps when I, you're not much of a threat but uh oh, yeah it was pretty sure. cool <laughs> <laughs> i i think most guys would rather beat you that way than beat you like oh by like oh i didn't tell him so he couldn't do good. oh yeah you know, yeah. it's almost like, especially like you go to like a team practice, like with your buddy, even you're like, and both of you guys are just going to make the same shoe heat for heat. It's like an unwritten thing. You're like, yeah, we're competing right now. We have the same exact stock. We're doing the same exact thing. It's like, everybody's trying to like, out, you want to outdo somebody like with all them having all the chances that you had too. So it's like, yeah, even playing field. Yeah. And it's not that it's like, oh, no excuses or anything. It's like, yeah, no, this is a true, like little judge of like where we're at on things it's a it's a good yeah. thing that's i i yeah, really definitely. like the heat for heat things especially because you get to see like each thing like okay he was ahead of me here like way ahead of me and then like when we got to here 
this went a little south for him and I gained a little bit, but I went straight down again over here. Like it's a, a cool thing. No, I think, I think you're right. There's not very many other things where it's a, they would, or sports even where you're going to help the, out the other team that much. And it's kind of like that from the bottom to the top, you know, like you'll go to a local competition that's in the gas and you'll see someone in the novice, like their propane like runs out or the forge isn't working or something. And then they just jump into the fire right next to them, you know, like it'd be just as easy yeah. for the person just to just be like, well, tough, tough luck, you know, <laughs> we just did that <laughs> in other last summer. sports, you know? <laughs> Yeah, last summer I I did that to Gavin. My fire, <laughs> my fire wasn't getting hot. <clears throat> I just jumped on in with Gavin. Just oh yeah, went for it. Yep, that was like a quick little eagle eye class. Yeah. What type of horses are you shooing mostly, Travis? Right now, probably a lot of jumpers. Is it? I was doing a lot of hunters and jumpers. Uh, it's it's nice to not do so many aluminums up front. Um, yeah, mainly a lot of like jumpers and stuff like that. A lot of backyard horses as well. Uh, some private farms where they have some horses. You know, they have a few sets, some fronts, some trims. Like no borders or anything like that. It's just their horses. And yeah. I, I really like those kind of barns. Oh, those are my favorite. So a lot of yeah. like fairly kind of large-footed horses then? There's a lot of off-the-track thoroughbreds uh, here because there's a couple racetracks and stuff. So people get a lot of horses from there. But yeah, a lot of warm bloods and thoroughbreds, I would say, for the most part. Okay. That makes sense. It's like, so I don't know if you listened to our podcast last week. If you did, you're probably like screaming at the at the radio a little bit. <laughs> Some of it. <laughs> <laughs> like that is not what I would be doing. Uh because like it seems like most of your shoes uh for Edgewood are like kind of bigger shoes. Yeah. For compared to like what I would you know what I mean? Like here, I, most of my horses are going to measure, like a front foot is going to measure, you know, 14 inches heel to heel all the way, sure. you know, around. So it's like mine are a little bit smaller than I think what, what yours would be up there. Yeah, those are kind of like some average size uh, feet that I would be working with. Like even some of the thoroughbreds, they'll have some pretty good feet on them, you know. Uh, it's not really? uncommon to get a thoroughbred with a size three foot. Bam, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty dang big. So is these it's, it's something that, like I'm always thinking of too of like coming up with a shoe list. Mm-hmm. How how hard was it to come up with a shoe list for you? And like what was some of the things that you you were thinking of when you came up with them? You know, it's like you knew you obviously know how a WCB works. I think that's yeah. really big for when a judge someone's judging it. Uh but yeah, how did you come up with your list, and what were some of the things that you were like trying to nail on it? Well, a lot of them, I I tried to pick some shoes that like at least I haven't seen on a list very often. I guess you were saying yeah. that you, uh, the Morgan uh, Hind pops up a bunch, but I I haven't seen it pop up, so I thought that was pretty like original. I guess not. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, that what aluminum bar shoe. Um, that was the shoe that got me on the team the first year. Only it was out of steel. The exact okay. same shoe, but yeah, out of uh, steel. And uh, I had won that shoe out of like all the guys, like Nathan Powell and stuff like that. So like it, it jumped me up quite a bit in the points. Yeah. So like cool. I always kind of remember that shoe was yeah being a good one for me, and I like making it. Got a couple little things to look for in it. So yeah, something that, that special. came from that. Um, the side bone bar shoe, we had to make that at the master's cup a couple of years ago. Um, okay. And that one was out of mills. So that's why you get like the 18 and a quarter. Cause I think it was like 480 or 380 or something like that. Okay. But for the that list, I mean, sense. I had a ton of ideas, you know, like, and I was thinking about it a bunch and I made a bunch of shoes that, uh, were supposed to be kind of specimens, but then, you know, you make them, you look at them later and you're like, Oh, that's not going to be good enough to be sitting in the program for a couple months right uh so i I made like a whole bunch of different stuff and then i just kind of picked uh whatever came out the nicest to be honest the deep-seated bar shoe i always wanted to see in there because it's just a good uh hammer finish test yeah uh yeah yeah it's just a good shoe you know no i i i I think you're right uh, there on it's like it's so hard to choose something because like i think like 
like when me and Gavin have been talking about what shoes to choose, we're going from like one extreme to the other. Sometimes it feels like you're like, let's make them do this crazy ass, you know, like shoe. You're like, okay, that's not realistic. It'd be cool, but it's yeah. maybe, a, maybe yeah. a bit much. Like, so you try to like bring it back down and you try to like, and then it's hard just pairing them together. Sure. It seems like once, once you, you choose them. <clears throat> yeah. No, I think I think that that front deep seated bar shoe is more like that's that's a better more of a skills test than I think a lot of people are thinking it's gonna be. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can't just like uh smash it out and run into the vice, you know? Like you gotta work that thing nice like the whole time. Uh like there's no clip on it, so like I think guys should have like good time to make some good ones. Uh the hind's a little bit more of a forging test for sure. Um, I've seen yeah. that shoe made by uh, Andrew Reader Smith. Uh, okay. He put it in actually in the intermediate division for uh, Rumble in the Bronx a couple of years ago, and I thought that was a super cool shoe. Really? Only it was, it was made of uh, three eighths by one, and I gave you guys some half by one. It kind of makes it a little easier to set yeah. things down. You really got a little height. bit more to work with, right? I could now that you say that's an Andy Reader Smith shoe. It's like. <clears throat> I could see him coming up with that shoe. It's a slugger. Like, he, <laughs> yeah. he he just make it by himself. Like it was just he, hey, he's a big fella. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. a big dude. <laughs> Swing a big he's hammer too. Strong. Yeah, <laughs> he is very strong. So, so then you did end up listening to uh, the podcast we did last week talking about the list. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Were we too far off on kind of the uh, thought process on some of the shoes then? I say you guys were pretty close, you know. No, so I think I think that'd be kind of cool, and I think this is like right now we're in an opportunity to do something that not a lot of people get get, and uh, we're like two weeks out from the contest. Hopefully, people have practiced these shoes, you know, they've got some system together. But I think right now it'd be a great time to like, man, you could almost go through with us a little bit of like how you made these shoes, if you don't mind, and. Sure. I don't think it's too late to fuck somebody up. You know what I mean? Like you, he, like we were saying <laughs> or earlier, help them out. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, you know what I yeah. mean? Like you, you hear that you hear from the judge the day before the contest or the night before you're going to have a go. And it's like too late. It's not going to turn out great yeah. for you if you change up your system, but man, mm-hmm. two, two weeks out, that's pretty good. That's a good enough time to have a few goats and try to sure. fine tune some things. So how yeah. are you putting together this two person class? Like how I would run it or how I made the shoes? You just made the shoes. So you didn't run them. You didn't like do a t- uh, go together like uh, to see how it's I did not s- no. sew, sew together. That's fine. Uh, no, I just figured they would probably run pretty good together just yeah. based on like experience running from those classes, right? No, oh, exactly. Uh, no, they're both half no. by one. So they're going to heat up kind of around the same and stuff like that. Yep. Um, how I made them. Um, I'd rather not talk about the aluminum shoe because I just did a big – post on that um, yeah. the deep seated bar yeah, shoe exactly. um i i ran that thing out uh on the straight just to get some depth and uh to actually thin out like the toe so i ran that out on the straight like just a couple uh runs and then i turned the toe and then i think i yeah, obviously marked the floor and through the toe and started doing some of the deep seating um okay yeah, a pretty good hockey stick. So you get like a, you know, really big bar in there because everything's going to blow out, right? So when you're making it, you want that bar to look bigger than what it needs to be, right? Okay. And and when you say bigger, you don't mean longer. You mean like wider. Like yeah, more, yeah. Like, more, more surface, yeah. more width to it. Yeah, like in the corner, like from the cor- inside corner, it's probably like, maybe like one and a quarter or something like that. You got to smack some steel into it. You'll get some of it out with the hammer boxing, but like not all, not a ton, you know? And when you said you like, so right away, you're going to run it out in the straight. Yeah. You're, you're running it and you're gathering width. Yeah. I'm, I'm narrowing it up and getting okay. like a thicker section. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's cause I noticed it has a very nice tidy toe through it. Like it's not a big old soggy, soggy toe it's, it's easy yeah the first one i made was like that it was like casper's head you know uh okay. and it didn't look like it would go on a, a foot really not nothing that i would really work on i'm sure there's some foot yeah. feet out there like that but um 
yeah, so I definitely wanted like a good toe in it that would look like it would drop on a foot. Yeah. No, I think that's and so and like just to like confirm, but I'm guessing like you ran that up and didn't flatten it out before you bent the toe. You just ran it up. No, yeah, and I left the toe it bent in it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, it Man. gives you more to deep seat, and it's easier when it's thicker too. You know. Yeah. No, completely. It's so, okay. You ran it up, toe bend, and then you put a big old fat hockey stick in that thing, and yep. l- let it gain some width on it. Like a big old English bar in that thing. Yeah. Looks nice. Uh, and you or you had already fullered through the toe at that point. Or at least marked it, you know, or put some of it through there, yeah. Okay. Like for when I'm making a bar shoe, I kind of just my first like objective is just to spin something around and weld it. Mm-hmm. Like once I have the weld, then, then I can start playing with the shape and start putting the elements and stuff like that into it. But that's how I was Absolutely. just kind of taught to do bar shoes. Yep. That's the hard part is getting it welded. And once you're welded, you know, it's like a sigh of relief. It's stuck. Yeah. You can move yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to no, be almost like a big element that you'll be looking for is just that width of that bar and making sure that bar is the right size in. Yeah. I think what does it say? One and a half or something. So it's going to have to be. Uh, yep. One it's a one. The, yeah. One and a half plate frog there, plate. Right? And it is three and three eighths wide. So yeah, it's a good one. And so, like, what are what are some elements you're looking at on that bar shoe? <clears throat> like, <clears throat> obviously, like right away, you're looking for just fundamentals, right? Nails down the middle. Yeah. Flat shoe to size, but after that, where are some things you're going to start nitpicking away at? Uh, like some of the boxing, the safe thing, some of the little details I've thrown in there. Uh, then the, you know, the depth of the deep seating, I don't want it kind of like just chickened in there. I like a good amount of deep seating, but it's not like it's, I didn't deep seat it till it was like a knife blade, right? Like okay. guys will have to look at the specimens when you get there, but like just match how much I have in there. That'll be a big one for sure. Yeah. No, cause then, it yeah, seems like there's kind of two camps sure will on be a big one. I'm sorry. Right? <clears throat> it seems like there's almost like two camps on that sometimes. Like some guys want that deep seating to go like all the way down to that bottom edge. Right. And it's like, it's just makes it kind of hard at that point to do anything with it. No, I think that's a sweet shoe. And it, I do, I really like how your bar comes into a bar. <laughs> like it doesn't yeah. have any bins outside. Like, you know, like a lot of times get people get some like corners there. So sure. I think that'll that'll be like something to watch for some people when their shape, especially being hammer finished, you're not going to be able to straighten that thing out on the vice, right? Because it's it's probably not enough stock to cut in a deep seating, huh? Uh, I mean, you could, but like, yeah, it probably won't come to size. And being hammer finished, like, I don't know, I I wouldn't do it. It's gonna be raggy. <laughs> yeah. Like it's gonna be, you're gonna have some yeah. little some little nasties beat back into there. You like to me, a, a hammer folks. finish is a hammer finish. Like there's no cutting, there's no uh, flatters, there's no set hammers. It's just off your own hammer, right? That's kind of yeah. how I was taught for for a hammer finish. I I'm with you, but I'm also like I'm just in my head of like, well, I can <laughs> full I can fuller the other side. I'm just going to pull, pull, pull this side a little bit fine. Like it's going it's to happen to cut out. Yeah. All right. So you got your, your hind now. How do you go about that one? Uh, so I put a good bump just to start the clip. Uh, yeah, just like a good mass up bump. I think I just put one in there. Um, okay. Because being graduated, you're going to get a lot of width from the toe, just like flattening it out and stuff like that. Uh, okay. Again, I don't know off the top of my head, like the thickness at the toe, but it's probably like max three eighths, you know, so you're, you're going to get some width and some clip just by uh, flattening that out and getting a nice graduation to it. Uh, so, yeah, I, b- I bumped that and then I think I put a little bit into the inside to forge on it and same with the outside. So there's about three little bumps in there and then crack the toe. And then I think I did the, the medial first, just kind of uh, ran it up, put some good safing on it. I think there's a bit of a heel cut on it a little bit as well. Um, and then the outside, uh, 
kind of like a preventer roaster, but just on the outside. So I'll, I'll run it up a little bit. Uh, I'll mark it out with my fuller just so there's a line in there. And then I'll take my set hammer and do most of it uh, and then just finish it up on the edge of the anvil, I think. Nice. That it's, it's funny. It says it in there. And like, this is like one of those things that's just like, I would have had this in my head already of like, uh, it says in there graduated high. Yeah. I totally missed that. (laughs) But when me and Gavin were talking about it last time, we're like, yeah, at some point in this shoe, you're going to have to go from flat to this raised heel. Like, (laughs) I'm like, man, Travis hid the shit out of it. You can't even see it on his. And now it makes so much more sense that it's it's thinner at the toe. (laughs) Yeah. I had no idea. I slipped my mind clearly. No, I completely have been like, as soon as you said that, I was like, fuck, that's why that toe, it has such a good toe in it. And it doesn't have any line in the quarters. It's like, this makes so much more sense. (laughs) There you go man no that's, that's cool. cool it's a nice yeah. shoe it's a really cool shoe thank you and it's it's one that's like man people are gonna have to almost nail the height in the heels to make the graduation right and to get to size right on it huh yeah i think so yeah it's not something you're really gonna get to to hide on because if you just don't do you think there's a fear a little bit on it of like for people like not for you you're just judging it but for people who run in the class, like uh, not bumping enough, do you think that could happen? Or they're just like, or or is am I putting too much thought into it and thinking that it needs a bunch of bump into it? I could be wrong, but my impression of it is a lot of shoes aren't going to be forged to section. Um, they're not going to have sweet shapes because it, it's it's a lot of forging, right? Um, yeah. I, I do really want to judge some good work, uh, but that's kind of my impression because at the end of the day, it is just a hind shoe right with yeah. a couple of elements on it yeah so for people listening to this like i i wouldn't i would just try to make a nice shape match it it has my, my nice shoe with my shape in it and get it to size um I, i'll have to see what's on the table but that's mainly what i'm going to be looking uh, at on a shoe like that like a lot of shoes like that you start getting to the middle bottom of the table like you just start getting some just turned u-bolts you know yeah not really much Always. shape and stuff into it so yeah I that's think that's gonna, what I'm that, thinking. That it, no, I think you're right. I think people are going to blow that toe out trying to make the graduation all be right. Because like you watch everybody do it, like they get nervous in a class, and so they just start flattening the shit out of it. You know what I mean? Right. So like that's what they're going to do, and they're going to blow that toe all up. And that is a really hard thing to do is to shape that toe up sweet like that. Yeah, it's it's sculpting completely. Like it's a you got a roadster toe. Or a big working horse toe in that thing. Yeah. So, I yeah, I, do, I think you're right. I think you're going to have some guys that are just going to end up with like a, almost a slider. You know, it's going to look like a, a mule shoe. They're not going to be able to get the sweet toe in it. So then they're not going to be able to sp- put sweet quarters in it. Yeah. But, I mean, I hope I'm wrong, but that's kind of what I've seen in a lot of like heavy forging shoes like that. You know, sometimes it just kind of end up a little blah, you know. So, uh, no. Then, yeah, it nails down the center. Um, yep. If, with you're, that if you're gonna pick a little fine or a little coarse, I would rather go a little bit coarse. Don't, don't go crazy, obviously. But like right. for me, like the main reason why I would make a shoe for a horse is so I can get some good pitch, some good depth. Because um, yeah. like I think we all know that like they make some pretty nice keg shoes these days. But the biggest problem I find is they're just either not pitched Punch. like well enough, or if they're pitched well enough, they're don't really have like a good suitable nail. Some like some of the big warm blood shoes uh, are getting better. But some of them will they'll be an E3 or a size 3 and it'll, it'll be punched for like a E7 or something like that, you know, after a week. <laughs> so that's, that's mainly why I would make a, a shoe like that for a horse is so I can actually like nail it up, you know, yeah. not split the wall. Of course. So with that shoe being a graduated shoe, when it is uh, sitting like on the table or whatever, ground surface down, can is there an air gap in it or is, does that ground surface sit flush with the table or the ground mine might have a little bit of a yeah a little bit of a gap in it like it, it might like kind of swoop up a little bit towards the heel you'll have to take a look at it when you get there um i've made a few but of those shoes and uh the best ones that came out gradual graduated white like weren't actually like the best shoes that one was kind of like the best one that turned out and like it didn't have like the best graduation but it was like well what do i kind of go with here 
so I went with like obviously the better just overall shoe. So mm -hmm. I would uh, listen to that. Just when, curious, uh, my own it. curiosity. Yeah, yeah. It's a. Yeah, I made maybe a three or four of those ones. He's gonna wear it flat, and then just a couple of turns around the paddock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leaving a little bit of height there for it to wear to wear it flat. <laughs> Now it, it no, might have a little bit of like a, a dip in it, like where it would might might swell up to the heel. But like I yeah. will want it to sit flat. Like if you lay that on the table, like I want both heels to be sitting flat and on the toe and not, you know, be kind of jiggling around a bunch. No rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No rock. Yeah. That makes sense. Like a roadster, you want at least three yes. points of contact, toe and heels. Yeah. Not not a not a rocker bar in the middle of that thing or anything. Right. No, that makes that makes sense, and I I think I think you're right on the section, but I think it does help to hear from like especially from the judge that like you're gonna have to work on the toe a little bit. Don't think that you're like doing something fucked up that you have to go to the horn and sculpt on that thing a little bit after you blew it out. Everybody's yeah. doing that, so like yes, yeah. No, I think that's cool. That's a that's a sweet shoe, man. Thanks, buddy. Did you did you forge the lateral heel after you set it down? Like, I did, did put a heel check on, on the inside. I did. I did that. Yeah. You did. Yeah. Yeah. I, know you said I was going to be lazy. It if you ha if you stretch it out long enough, I mean, probably smart, you know. But I did put a little. You're going to gain some. You, but after like after I said it, and I was thinking, I was like, man, I don't know if you'd get enough width if you cut it. It'd be like a little bit weak on that inside section. It, could be. it wouldn't have a real sweet point to it. All right, we'll we'll move on to the to the individual class. All right. First, first I was just thinking. Hey guys, just want to talk about Yukon Forge. If you listened to the last episode, you heard that John McNerney and Jim Poor made a deal where John is going to be making the driving hammers from Flatland Forge now which is pretty damn cool. So the process is, process is still going to be the same, and the hammers are going to be made the same, but for a limited time only, there is going to be a special collab until hammers run out that say Yukon Forge on one side and have the Jim Poor Flatland Forge steel or a stamp on the other side. So to order those, go to www.yukonforge.com. Use code BRAINS. Get to 10% off and... Try to get yourself a cool hammer. Yukon Forge also has any other kind of tool that you could ever need. He has the propane nut, which makes for ease of tightening your propane regulator and the propane bottles. He's got uh, rounding hammers, clipping hammers, and hoof knives. His hoof knives are some of the sharpest I've ever used, and they last a long, good long time. So, can't also forget about tongs. He's got lots of tongs as well. So head over to www.yukonforge.com. Use code BRAINS. Get yourself some savings. And lets us know that uh, you guys are supporting the show. Thanks. Let's get into it. You you put it together. of like this is a, a, The test right away is that you have to work an aluminum shoe with a steel shoe, huh? Yeah. And... I, something I re, I don't know if you still run classes this way, but I remember you running classes in the past where you would make one shoe at a time. Like you would uh, pretty much make one shoe and then you would start the other shoe and you'd make that shoe. And it, was, it was always cool to watch. Is that kind of – would you, would you run this class that way if you were going to run it? I probably would at least till it's welded, like the aluminum bar shoe. Once that thing is welded, it's so easy just to kind of go back and forth and just put some fullering in it check it, your other shoe, you know, do maybe it'll do a little bit, get in the vice or whatever. You could probably do a lot of back and forth, but after it's welded. Yeah, take yeah. your time. I, I'd probably just, it, it probably wouldn't even take that long. Like, you could probably get it welded in like 10, 15 minutes if you were just going at it, you know. Like, it's aluminum. It's not going to take that long to heat up. The heat's going to last a good amount of time. Like, if you can make like a match play shoe in like, I don't know, yeah, five six minutes you could easily make at least get that thing to the welding stage at like 10 15 minutes and then you'd have 45 minutes to make the other shoe and uh, just finish up the other one that's yeah kind of what i would be thinking no i think that's great advice i think that's really good advice it, because it is one of those things like i think 
if you tried putting them together and doing heat for heat, things are going to go south. Like, or you're going to end up like beating on a so shoe. would for me, cold. anyways. Dude, me too. <laughs> I'm, not <laughs> even, I'm not even going to lie. Every time, this just sounds like I'm a huge pussy, but it's like every time I've seen an aluminum bar shoe on a list, I'm like, well, I know which one I'm not going to. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like I'll, I'll make an aluminum shoe with no weld, but you want me to weld that thing? It's like, yeah, I'm It's a busy. bruiser. <laughs> well, it was it's like that this year, kind of at the Canadians. I, I ended up being getting pretty sick, so I didn't go to it, unfortunately. But like, yeah, I saw that there's an aluminum bar shoe with a toe insert. Like, well, oh yeah, <laughs> I'll see you guys at the next one, you know. And then uh, yeah, Johnny, it was actually Johnny Edwards that got me onto uh, this new Flux. He he might have got it from Ben Mangan or something like that. But uh, man, it was so easy and so sweet. I'm like, man, everyone needs to know about this stuff, you know. Yeah. What is it? <laughs> what is the Flux? Uh, the it's like a flux core wire rod, right? Okay. Um, it's kind of like an all-in-one thing, but you use it like the other stuff where you kind of just roll up a bit of a ball or, or whatever and then just kind of give it a little preheat. Make sure everything's clean, then you just put it on there. Just run your fire low, and you just kind of like just let it melt on there. It melts from the, the heat from the shoe, not the flames, right? So you don't have to necessarily have like your shovel over there trying to get like the flames to come onto it. It's the heat from the aluminum that melts the flux. Um, okay so it's almost acting a little bit more like a solder because that's what, like a solder does solder melts like you melt solder with the project not with the flame that you're using sure and solder solder likes to run to the flame instead yeah. of away from it so like yeah that's pretty cool that it does like it sucks I guess down technically to the it, fire it is like brazing aluminum right like i guess there isn't really like welding aluminum yeah, yeah. I mean, we're horseshoers. I don't think we get too in the weeds, but no. it's, like it, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's always funny that we like we get these like terms that you get around people that are like really smart and stuff, and they're like, "Well, actually, you're like, dude, I don't know <laughs> yeah. how it works. I just know it works. Yeah, and, and this it turns out cool, right? Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> Me, caveman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I did really like you put on your pictorial that I uh, you pritchled from into the wood. And it was funny, like, yeah. we kind of talked about it on another thing. I was like, oh, be careful about Pritchard. And it's like, I saw that you did it in the wood. It's like, that is that is smart. Like, yeah, it makes a really nice, clean hole. Like, you're a... Uh, you're... Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't really think about it from how you were saying that it would, like, actually kind of, like, support the weld and everything would be... I never thought of it that way, but I do know that when you just drive that uh, aluminum in there, like, it just Pritchell's out clean, right? Like, if you just do it... yeah. Like, the pritchel hole, like, I mean, it'll be, like, hanging there, and then you'll, like, knock it off, and then you have to go and, like, uh, file the back of it and all that stuff. Like, this, oh, it's like you, might, you might want to give it a slide. quick little file, but, like, it's it's a lot cleaner. Man, that's what I, like, you can really tell how good a guy did some stuff by the back of his aluminum shoes. Like, you know, by the ones that he was hitting, where he was hitting it all over the place, and, like, man, hoofside of your aluminum shoe looks really nice. Like, it's a really sweet job okay. uh yeah I, I don't want to dwell on that one too much because you did do a sure. really sweet pictorial for it everybody can check that out on travis well Facebook one question page. would you be yeah. bringing a block of wood with you to edgewood would i would i yeah if you were going to the contest would you be putting a block of wood in your uh, toolbox before you went yeah uh, it would depend on the weight yeah i would do it, it in it, the it, Craig, it doesn't really Craig's it's not really trailer. that heavy you know yeah, I'm sorry. I would just do it into Craig's trailer, just ride into the, <laughs> ride into the, ride into the deck. Just it would, it'd make his fucking day. You just fucking oh get up my god, and just oh, pitch the imagine. shit out of that thing. <laughs> <laughs> he'd be pumped, dude. Oh, he'd love that. Throw a half fucking filled water bottle at him and just keep pitching. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> be good. You said there's a couple little things that you'd be looking for on this shoe. Uh, do you care saying what those would be? Like, what some like key features you're gonna kind of be honing in on? Just having it looking like a, a lateral extension, you know, uh, just ha just getting that material moved out that way. Yep. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. No, and, it, it uh, does. You need like One. that width without so like 
digging so much into it with boxing and stuff like that, right? I don't want to see like a pile of uh, boxing. I don't want to see someone that just kind of like went in there and took it all out to get the whip. Uh, that's not really like the test of that. Okay. Okay. No, so I one totally thing, get what you mean. When you said where you got the inspiration for this shoe, did you set it up and weld that steel one that you saw on that list? Did you weld that one with the same way, like uh, whip it across like that? I did actually, yeah, because I was just at a contest previous uh, at the Canadian Championships, and I think Travis Coons was judging that one, and uh, he had like that that whip across hind. Uh, okay. Yeah, where you weld it in the corner there. Uh, it's a shoe he's kind of like known for. You know, it's like feather fuller toe clip, and then yeah, he kind of whipped it across, welded it. So we yeah. had to make that at Calgary, and then uh, I'm like, man, that's a really cool way to do this. And then I saw that shoe. I was looking at the picture. I'm like, well, it kind of looks like there's a lot over to that one side. And anyone I would just weld in the the center and bump like the outside, it just was not looking anything like the picture. So. Yeah, I gave that a couple of goes, and I was the only one who did it that way, and it worked out pretty good for me. Yeah, yeah. I'd say so. Yeah. <laughs> it, <clears throat> the the couple that I've seen on Facebook, it seems like so far that I've seen people make, it seems like they're either getting a ton in that corner, like a lot of material in that corner, or it seems like they're like not getting very much material in that corner. The shoe's pretty big, and the medial's really kind of skinny. Okay, just, I haven't actually seen too many on uh, Facebook. I've seen maybe like a couple. Okay. I think Chris Madrid might have had one in one of his stories or something like that. But I haven't actually seen uh, a ton of them being made, uh, not in my feed. And I don't go on there a ton just to kind of check out what people are doing. But, yeah, I have not seen many people make that shoe. No, I think like that's a shoe for me. I'd, I'd have to make a bunch of those ones. That would be – that's a hard one, real hard one. But it's cool. Now, well, once you get the knack, it's not too bad. Like, no, like that's what you like yeah. when you broke it down. When I, when I saw your pictures, I was like, okay, that's way less bumping than I thought. Yeah, yeah, it was an aha moment mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, yeah, like because half an inch in each side. Oh yeah, because when we were talking about it before, I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> gonna be like i don't know yeah five, five bump beats in that corner like yeah I'm yeah gonna, i'm gonna need a little while here guys <laughs> i'm not gonna get anywhere very quick no it seemed very efficient the way you made yeah. it your pictorial is like man it's a cool shoe it Thank just you. has like uh yeah. i think it's like easy to get lost in it where like if you don't imagine it being a lateral extension, it's it's easy to get lost in the like the outside shape or the inside shape and not know what to do with it. I think. Sure. But that could just be my eyes. Sweet. I, I just uh, see it as another uh, just basic shoe with a couple elements in it, right? Yeah. No, I think that helps what you said. Nothing yeah. too racked and just things down the center, or at least punched yeah. how I punch it. Yep. Should now we move on to the Morgan. The old Morgan. Sure. Yeah. How would you go about that bad dog? Uh, well, yeah, I, I think I, I put a, a really good bump in the toe, maybe even one and a half, and then turned it, and then kind of set it up like a French hind a little bit, to be honest, and then okay. I started doing some of the chamfering and pulling that toe out, and then putting it back and pulling it out a little bit. I kind of got the toe sorted before I moved on to the branches, for the most part, and uh, yeah. just, I just the big thing was keeping it as tight in the inside, inside radius as possible. Anyone that kind of got a little wide, it just didn't look right, you know? Uh, yeah. So I kept that toe really tight. And um, and then, yeah, just draw up the branches. Uh, that was one of the first specimens I had made. So I can't exactly remember whether I actually turned up a heel cock or when I drew the branches out that there was enough just to set it down like a wedge. Yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure I might have I set them down like wedges. Because anytime I turn them up, they actually look too big. Okay. Like you you kind of want them like nice and dainty, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. No, I, that is something like I was going back and forth with in my head on it. It's like, would you, would you run it up to a square and then turn it up? Like, would it be too much? Or would you just have enough height already there that you'd kind of just start setting it down and just get into it? I, 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 I think you like hit the nail on the head, obviously, there. If you're like have a tight toe and I think like 
tight toed doesn't mean in this instant like okay you have a square a square could yeah. be considered a t- a tight toe but this is like inside of that like yeah. it's uh it's it's tight in the terms of like a very narrow and long foot yes yeah and when, and when i shake if, that like if I not to... it's gonna have a lot of quarters and then it's gonna oh, look yeah. weird like i was i had dead, done some uh like hackneys and and horses that had like those packages on um when i was younger i i mean i had one call i didn't actually put those shoes on but they would come back from the shows all shot up like that and i just mainly do pulling and trimming uh on their off season so i've seen them on on feet before uh and done yeah. fairly well as well um so when i was making that i try to keep like a like a reining plate shape kind of in, in that shoe right because like you're kind of going out in front and out behind you know you have to have like yep. the, the the foot in the nailing, right? Yeah. No, you have a really nice foot in it. I think that's what me and Gavin were talking about before. It's like, man, like you you look at it from the hoof side and you can see the extension of the foot in yeah. front of it. Like it's it's yeah. really cool. Yeah, you definitely really uh, want to see like a hind foot in there, but it, it's got to be like a nice soft shape. I think. Like I don't think with like everything you're going to be putting on like that kind of a horse with all the pads and stuff, you're going to get like this spade. I mean, you, you might, but like, I never saw it. Anything that was done well <coughs> was just kind of like done like a nice raining plate where it just kind of just flowed like a nice soft kind of egg shape. Well, that's the horses, right? It's like, cause yeah. I, I, sh- I shoe some Morgans that are show our show Morgans. And it's like, she's got one that's a big old, like you would think he's a warm blood. He looks sure. like the only reason that you could tell that he may be a Morgan is that he's camped out behind really far. And, but for like the, her like pure blood, like more t- traditional Morgan horses, they don't really have any quarters. Like these horses are kind no. of mule footed. Like it's a real straight foot with like hooky heels on it. Almost on like, sure. This, this shoe would drop right on those Morgan horses. That's it's a, it's a sweet one. And so, like, and you got these, sweet clips on the thing yeah it's how gonna have you, some good clips on there how did you go about pulling them just with uh my gym pour uh cone hammer or yeah it, it's more of like a ball style it's not that his ball peen but like it's kind of between what he's making now of uh, the cone and uh that so it's got a pretty good ball on it i just yeah, pulled some okay. good clips with that but yeah it's got to go above like all the pads and all that crap right so yeah. Anytime I've seen that shoe, like it's got to have some good clips on it, some girth to it. Yeah. Well, man, that's like so. When you went to go pull them, did you maybe like hang over more than you normally would for a clip to try to just get them taller? I just try not to like bash it up a bunch, you know. Like I just try to, when I hang it over the edge of the anvil, just kind of go into the corner and then just kind of like leave that outside as like unmolested as possible, and then you you can get like a lot like a way bigger clip doing it that way because sometimes i don't know i'll get lazy and stuff like that i'll start hitting that edge a little bit and then i see you know you don't really have so much material for your clip right so i just kind of just focused on just hitting the center where i was hitting and then just pulling a big old bubble letting it pull over the edge as much as it wanted to yeah that that's something that like my problem i had for a long time with pulling clips i would pull on my tong hand a lot oh and you're like you're pretty much just like cutting your clip off as you're pulling your sword. Yeah, so it's, really, yeah. it's really, it's really cool. <laughs> or just hitting it too much. Like I remember like, when I was on oh, the team yeah. with Andy, he's like, "Like man, when are you gonna stop hitting that bubble?" You know, like <laughs> it only needs like maybe like seven good hits if you're hitting in the right spot, and then just stop. <laughs> you're like, "Well, I'm really scared of pulling the source, and I'm just hoping I have enough." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you get a bigger source, you keep hitting it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was my that was my thought. I was like, "If I yeah, just keep yeah. hitting here, the source will keep." There's no way I'm making it smaller. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, well, yeah, when, sure. you, when you suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I think those are some good points on that shoe. And it's like, you got it punched coarse, you know? Like, it's it's mm-hmm. it's punched for the throat. You could get that thing on there. Yeah, and then yeah, uh, a good I, one. I think the nail is like a con- combo six or something. Something that's yep. going to be a little bit bigger than what you would put that on if it was just the shoe against the foot. So, But I think like a combo six kind of, it's not too far off of fitting the same punch as like a combo five. So it, you shouldn't have like no. you know, big old uh, 
goals and stuff like that in there. Right. No, it, it like literally it's just uh I don't think the combo six is really much wider at all. It's just a little like uh width wise, you know, that way I one think of the so, shoe. Yeah. It's just it's just a little bit longer of a nail. Like it's mm, uh yeah. in length. It's more like a hammerhead race nail. Like they, yeah, they hold they, on they, good. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I think we yeah, I think we went over that one pretty good. And I uh, so it's like you're definitely looking for a sweet inside shape, I would say. And is offset also, a big, uh, big element in that one? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're going to want enough a, on that outside. Pretty good trailer too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is kicked out a little bit. It's got a nice little yeah. donkey to it. Like not, nothing crazy, but like, I will want to see that thing kicked out. Yeah. No, I think like you're saying, like it, it's one of those shoes that it's like, it's one you'd count out almost at first when you're not really thinking too much about it. You're like, well, that's the easy one, right? Yeah, like, sure. That's the one yeah. That, but it's like that thing has so much subtleness to it. And, you know, all of us like from like early on around straight bar, like you have these straight bars in here that are like pretty like traditional little like straight bar sh shapes. That should be pretty easy to fall off the anvil. But there's not too many of us out here that are shooing hind feet that are that subtle and long. Right, that are really like you know flowing. Yeah, not me. Yeah, it's hard. It's a, it's a really that's like Morgan horses that I shoe. If they go away and they come back with like some show shoe and that's shitty on it, it's like it's usually really <laughs> really wide and they nailed into the wall. Like it's like that's kind of what goes yeah. on. It's a yeah. They're really hard shapes to to nail. They're not not what we're used to looking at. Right. It's a sweet one, man. Thank well, you. to move on to the uh, the eighteen and a quarter inch side bone yeah. <laughs> yeah i know that was i was like dude what the fuck where did this 18 and a quarter come from <laughs> yeah that makes complete well, sense, it was in so. mills right from another shoe so it was even oh. in mills i guess and yeah. uh i had a drop just lying on the on the floor i'm like oh this is too good just to let this waste worked there. out so, <laughs> i made one and it came out good and I'm like, oh, that's what you're getting <laughs> hell yeah the hard, the hard thing about it is picking up drops off the floor is you have to remember what the fuck they were. Yeah. To begin with, it's like, man, I got them written down on like my little whiteboard in my shop. Or like, I'll pick up a drop and start making a shoe out of it. It's like, it was like, okay, well, every once in a while, you'll was this long. <laughs> yeah. Well, once in a while, like you'll go to a contest and like they'll put in a shoe and it'll be like, you know, whatever shoe, and then like the say three is by one, and then it'll be a question mark, question mark, question mark on the length. So it's like obviously they made it one time. Forgot what they cut. I got a few in the house that are like that too. It's like I don't know if I ever throw them in. It'll just be you know you gotta cut your own length. <laughs> yeah, come to size. Yeah, yeah. That is a <laughs> test in itself. Don't too. ask me. I don't know. <laughs> I I think it's like it's like side note. Like I think it's a test to do that to like make people figure out their own size. But yeah. I also think it's more of a test to make them match your forging style. I would say so, eh? So, like, if you make them cut what you cut, and, like, okay, you have to use this whole piece. Like, you have to actually like, go through this. Like, they got to match up your forging style. They got to bump all of, the, all of it in that you bumped in. It's, like, the volume's yeah. there. The the weight of steel is there. You know, so, like, it has to be very close. Where it's, like, if they get to cut whatever they want, it's pretty easy to, like, well, I'm going to go ahead and cut this corner, or I'm going to cut this corner and go ahead and, like, chicken shit this part so i can get down a little yeah. bit our great friends over at ferry box have been supporting us on forging brains for a while now since the time that they have sponsored the show we have received many great products that i wouldn't have thought about buying or because i was being a tight ass but they were sent to me in their subscription box and now i use those products in my day-to-day -day practice each box is sent by monthly and in those boxes is an array of of the top tools and products that have been tested by the greats in our industry. So go to www.farrybox.com and use code BRAINS for 25% off your first month's order. You won't be disappointed. I'll tell you that. Quicker. It's a, I do, it's, it's test both ways. I do, I do see sure. it. But it is funny when you, the guys at the top, they're all kind of cutting the, the same anyways. We had a, like a draft shoe, uh, Jim Belfort, put in uh, like last year at the master's cup and uh, it was the same thing. It was like, just told you half by one and a quarter and then you cut your own length. But like me, Ben Mangan, everyone were, we were all cutting like 
19 and a quarter or whatever it was, right? It's, it's kind of funny how it all kind of turns out the same. And that the Royal yeah. Winter Fair, uh, when Ian judged, I think he threw in like a French hind Culkin wedge. It was like the same thing. It was just three by one, cut whatever you want. But like, yeah, me, Dan, Corkery, and like most of those guys, we we're all cutting like 11 and a half. It, it's kind of funny how it works out. Yeah. No, I think it's just the same way as like hammers, you know, it's like, yeah, ha- hammers, like all of us are cutting that make hammers are all pretty much cutting the same exact amount of steel to come up with this hammer that looks about this way. That's within these proportions. Like it's a, yeah. it comes down, it comes down to volume as long as you're efficient with the volume that you were given, which all the guys at the top are pretty dang efficient with their volume. It's like going to come out pretty close to the same. It's a, it's yeah. a cool deal. So this was a shoe that you had already made before at a contest. Yeah. So I'd had lots of practice. <coughs> Those did, are the best ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I'm still fresh on this one. So yeah, won't take me too many afternoons. Yeah. And, and did you end up welding it there on that medial side where you just kind of like overlap the branches then? Yes. Yeah. So you did run up the one branch and ne- like necked it up thinner and then laid it over the top of it. To gain a little so uh, yeah, so I I put a bump into the one side and made the heel, and that was mm-hmm. one heat. I mainly okay. bumped it so I'd have more material to weld and hit on. And then the other side, uh, yeah, I turned up just like a massive hockey stick, cooled most of it except for the corner, packed that corner in, and then got another heat. It's all marked out and everything. And then I would turn like another. So it was a big hockey stick, and then I turned like half of that up. Mm -hmm. And then just really like flatten it out and uh, try to get like a bit of a wedge. So when it welded, it was already kind of wedged up. Okay. Uh, I left like the back of it a little bit wider than um, the top of it. So when I did weld it, I can kind of pull on it a little bit like that and and kind of get the seam, at least on the outside of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like the inside where the horn's going to be sitting, there's not really a ton you can kind of do to get in there with your hammer, but like around the heel, and like the outside of it, like you can kind of get that seam gone pretty good. Um, by the but time it was but like welded. coming from like just like a blacksmith point, it's like dude, you're that area around the heel is so nice. Like you you can't do much with the horn, like you were saying in there. But it's like rasping or not, if you fuck up and you do a bunch of pushing in there, you're gonna put some cold chunks on the inside of that section. It's gonna be nasty. It's like you yeah. you did it. You did a really sweet job on that shoe. Oh, yeah, thanks. Sweet. No, that's so like the corner on the outside on the straight bar, you got most of that corner in there from bumping, not from Yeah, from like know, doing, from, like, a, good doing hockey a big stick. hockey stick. Yeah, because it's actually not surprising so how little the you beveled. can get. Yeah, like when you do like the side bone part, like it's surprising actually how little you can uh fill that corner out. I, I did it, like the first few I'd made for like that contest. Like I didn't really hockey stick much, and I'm like, oh, you know, I'll be able to pull that out, no problem, right? Uh, yeah. It's it's surprising how little you can actually get, like to actually have it come like straight and out, and then actually have like some mass in that corner. Yeah. Now that you say it, it's like the only way you're gonna get the corner is if you go around the corner. Yeah. And that's you. You don't want them to go around the corner like that. They doesn't have it. So like no that right. that does make complete sense that you'd have to get most of that corner just from the hockey sticking. That and on the back you, side of it, it, it is it's a little bit like the um, aluminum bar shoe where it, like the outside like it is kind of kicked out just a little bit right like that outside like it kind of goes out and 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 the outside and the inside is kind of nice and tight right and, like that's kind of yep. what I'm thinking of so I will want it like almost a little offset a little bit towards the outside with a nice big corner in there. Yeah. That was kind of like something that we picked up on is like the shapes are all fairly similar with your, bar, your fronts or your bar shoes or whatever. Like they have an inside outside shape. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's cool. No. And it's a, so it's like a, the same thing on here. It seems like the nails on the straight bar are pretty much just straight down the center. They don't have anything going on there. Except for on the lateral, you can see where the lateral toenail is like almost inside of like where you have the chamfer going. Is that kind of, and they kind of gradually, is that kind of like a major element that you'd be looking for? Uh, More of a happy accident. Oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah. 
like when I was filing it's and stuff cool, like that, yeah. like, all this is kind of looking like that, and I kind of accentuated that. But like, will that be like yeah. my number one priority? Probably no. not. Because yeah. like I don't know, just practicing and stuff like that myself. Like I'd get like my mind wrapped up on these like little details that when it came time to compete, the judge kind of like didn't. There, even there's like more important things to, <laughs> that the judge cared about is kind of what I'm getting at, right? And I <clears> yep. just, yeah. Yeah. So what are some important things you're going to look at on this shoe? Uh, like one thing that I, I would say right away is like, it's going to be hard to get it flat, huh? Uh, it's not too bad, I, at least when I made it. But yeah, definitely flat will be a big one. Uh, nails and stuff like that. If you didn't, if you can print all that stuff out without breaking your weld on the inside, like, yeah, so tough. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's, what we were tough one. that's what we were talking about. The bolt, the wood oh, block the wood. was on was yeah, on this shoe yeah. that I was like, man, Pritchell in that heel. That's right. That heel nail is going to be a booger. Yeah, that yeah. that is one. Yeah, that because that's kind of like, a, man, what a, what a shitty moment, you know? You make the shoe and go, and then you bust the, the step. What, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe yeah, I try to give guys that. a little bit of something easier on the foot and then a little bit of a harder specimen. No, I yeah. think that's really cool. I, it's like, yeah, maybe that wood block is worth the flying wood. That little bit of weight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just a piss few ounces Craig. or whatever it is. Yeah, piss Craig off and just go into his trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Use your butcher block brush. But it's like, uh, yeah. so into the into the live shoeing. Yeah, I uh, I think this is a good because like you've judged. Not you, Jay. You haven't judged Edgewood before, but you've competed at Edgewood, and so yeah, I think yeah. you have a good understanding. Like I've always wondered that, you know, like a judge comes from outside of it, and they're like, "Well, maybe you could have done a little bit more here." And it's like, "Have you yeah. ever trimmed one of these feet?" <laughs> so like, yeah. Never, uh, yeah, that's when I realized I couldn't sharpen the hook knife. It's like, oh, I've yeah. been on the team and stuff, and I go there. I'm like, oh, I, I don't know what I'm doing with these knives. <laughs> yeah. it's they're not cutting. <laughs> yeah, it's miserable. Yeah. yeah. So what what are some stuff that you're looking for on the foot? I think just like I think everyone knows how to shoe a foot, you know, just like a dime's width around the foot. Uh, good trim, good shoe, good fit, good nailing. Uh, I'll go over the feet with people and stuff like that, and like nice. We'll we'll see what what's there and how hard it is and whatnot. But um, if you're unsure, I mean, just brush it up nice and and just kind of leave it out of nature. Uh, tended you know so i'll kind of go over that a bit one thing that i remember like no depth like in like you know everything's just wet and bottomed out right so yeah i'll I'll definitely be giving some a little bit of sympathy a little depending on what people get so yeah yeah one thing i remember about being there last year is a lot of the feet were pretty short and busted up so there wasn't like a ton of actual hoof trimming going on you know there was like one or two horses that had a lot of length but a lot of them were you know pretty well cowboy shot or barefoot yeah sure yeah a lot of three eighths by three quarter stuff going on yeah yeah so little, for little ranch ponies like match play did you think of of the side bone shoe for people to make yeah i did i i just uh apparently there was one in madison when uh craig judged but like again my little run at the wcb is i don't know if we'd seen a ton of like match plays for in the live shoeing and i figured it's practical you know it's a very usable yeah. shoe i use a decent amount of them uh mm-hmm. and then it kind of just runs into the side bone bar shoe you're kind of doing something similar yeah so kind same of shoes the theme yeah same same tools yeah you know, I, I i think it's a good one it's 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 a hard one though too because it's like uh for me, sometimes those match play, those like the feet are hard to determine which side's a lateral and which side's a medial. And oh, so yeah, I just yeah. kind of make, I just kind of make a unisex shoe. Like I, I don't ever mark a lateral <laughs> heel. That's a good yeah, like, point. I didn't this even think one, about that. This one, you have to make a lateral side. Like you got to call it. Like I wonder yeah. how many people are going to come up there and be like, Oh shit! We each made a shoe for the different side of the horse. Like, oh, well, that happened in Madison a, a couple of times, and I think Carl was pretty nice. There's a couple of ones that were like, "Well, is it a left or is it a right?" He's like, "Just make the left," and <laughs> oh, okay. everyone just did. And nice. Yeah, I don't mind doing something like that if it's like very ambiguous, you know. 
Yeah. Yeah, because some of them are. You're like, fuck, I don't know what that was. Like you leave yeah. away from it. You you ask somebody else. You're like, dude, what side of the horse was that? <laughs> like, that was, <laughs> yeah do you do you have any tips for the novice guys uh for their nov or for their match play or just like novice in general just the novice shoes in general yeah just uh just good basics get nails down the center uh nothing racked uh i don't like that uh yeah clips center of the toe and just like good sections right i think like that's what the what craig makes people like make for the novice is like you kind of get like either like a piece of like half by one and a quarter that you have to draw out or you get like a big piece of threes by one you have to bump down so just Mm -hmm. like probably like good sections good shapes yeah no it's like i think it's 13 and a half inches of three eighths by one for the front and 13 inches for the hind and it's uh so it's enough steel to like put a sweet section into a shoe if you if you could yeah right it's one of those hard ones they're like uh it seems like a lot of the novice guys rush through it. Then they got a shoe with uh, that's racked and some screwy yeah. nail holes. So, no, I do think that's good. I think that'll be uh, pretty dang helpful for people that are going to Edgewood and may have had some questions or whatever, you know, about these shoe lists. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, like, no one wants to go there and see anybody struggle, you know? So No. I'm, I'm, right. I try to help people out as, as much as I can. I mean, sometimes I get busy and uh, maybe a message or two might get missed or maybe a short reply or something like that. But I mean, at the end of the day, we want to see everyone uh, who goes there be successful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, completely, man. That's why like, even when I went to like Madison there, like I brought that flux. So everyone who was there could take some home and stuff like that. Right. Like I, I didn't put that shoe in there just to throw a wrench in everyone's uh, plans. Right. Like I right. kind of want this to be like the next thing that just, was like the roadster before, but now like everyone's making roasters like it's nothing, right? We're doing them in yeah, five minutes for the mash player, whatever, right? So, but back like 20, 30 years ago, like the roadster was like a big deal. And like if you yeah. saw it in a list, for some people, it'd be a deal breaker, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think the aluminum bar shoe is a good one. It's a, no, I'm just kind of a bitch about them sometimes. Uh, I, th- I think it's a great deal. And it's like, Contests to me are always like a skill building test. You know, that's why I think it's cool when they put like tools are on the list or something a little bit weird on the list. It's like, man, it's another like how many times are are we going to build roadsters, you know, for horses in our books? But it's like, yeah, you might run into a situation where you need a tool or like you're pretty likely to run into a situation where you need a set of aluminum bar shoes. Yeah. Yeah. To be able to do that confidently in front of people man, you look like a freaking hero. Like it's a, I think it's a great list, man. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Well, that's good. Kind of like stray away from Edgewood. You had mentioned, uh, you'd been on the Canadian farriers team, but you've also been on the WCB team as well, right? Yeah. So how many were you on the, uh, Canadian farriers team before you had made the WCB team? Yeah. So I got on the Canadian team, like 2013. Uh, okay. And same thing. Like, I the first year it was tough, but then by the end of it, it was like, man, I learned so much that year. I got to do it again. So I did it like 2013, 14, 15, and 16. So it was four years straight. Wow. And then uh, like during that time, I'd been to uh, like the Ice Storm, Fort Worth, uh, oh, 2013 yeah. and stuff like that. And I'd been to some WCBs. And I thought like, man, they're so much fun and, and just such a positive environment and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think after uh, 2016 on the team, I tried to take, like, a pretty good, like, run at doing the team. I think it was, like, that 2017 season when I didn't have, like, so many obligations with the Canadian team that I could practice and hit all the WCBs because there was five at that time. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I did that, and then I got on the 2018 team, which was pretty sweet with, like, Tom Peterson and Andrew Wells, Chad Chance. Yeah. Adam Farr. That was a good team. So after being on like a Canadian team four years, was it like a huge jump or big difference going on to the WCB team after having some team experience? Uh, it, yeah, it definitely wasn't as bad as like my first jump from like not being on any teams to be on the Canadian team, but it was a bit different and just like uh, you know, different influences and uh, different ways of doing stuff like that. Different dynamics, people from different parts of uh, the world, you know, essentially. Well, I imagine that's got to be a hard logistics thing for you 
being from Canada and the rest of the team, basically the United States, like that's probably got to be a hard thing to juggle. Uh, I mean, I think it'd be like the same as like, yeah, me and Tom, like we both like don't really live around a whole lot of people. Like anytime we go to anything, we're always jumping on planes and stuff like that. So I don't think I had like any more traveling to do than anybody else. Uh, if that was like kind of your question there. So I didn't really find that too bad. And, uh, but when I was on the Canadian team, most of it, the time they were like kind of like Ontario teams. So we might have like one or two people fly out from out West or something, but for the most part, we could drive to everything. So yeah, it was definitely a lot more traveling on Does, the WCB team. Yeah. Doesn't Canada do it where they try to set up the team like a regional kind of area, like where they try to do like a West Coast team and then an East Coast team? Or am I getting... Uh, no, it's just the, the, the team trial will like switch around. So it's not just stuck in one oh, part of the country. Okay. Yeah, like nice. it'll be out West for a couple of years and then it'll be in Ontario for a couple of years. And I think like Quebec gets it for a couple of years. We try to move it around that way, yeah. And then sometimes that'll draw out some people from that area. Uh, to jump on the team that year that makes sense yeah so i did have it wrong <laughs> it's funny me and gavin are talking about it beforehand it's like we you forget that there's a whole east side of canada sometimes yeah <laughs> like, yeah, like, like yeah. we do we do we like you assume like oh it's just bc in that area yeah, <laughs> there's this whole other chunk yeah. over there <laughs> you're doing things <laughs> it's like i totally yeah when you said eastern time i was like holy smokes you're on the other side <laughs> Canada. Yeah. That's when I went to Ontario, they're like, we're going to run to New York real fast. It's like to New York real fast. I was like, that doesn't <laughs> sound real fast at all. Yeah. yeah. They're like, they're like, no, it's just right, right down the road. Pretty much. It's like, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. We are way over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. sorry. I missed that one. It looks like a pretty good list and everything. And Nigel and Beanie were there. It looked like a good time. Are you far was, from the States then? Uh, I'm a couple hours from the States. I mean, it depends where in the States. Uh, but yeah, like if I could just, I guess I could probably be down there in like two and a half hours, like to Windsor or something like that. You don't ever yeah. go and like shoe any horses in the United States though? I do not. No, no. I know yeah. some people that do like Luke Peru and stuff like that. Some of the show shoers and stuff like that. It's just, uh, getting like the licensing and, uh, yeah, just having all your ducks in a row that way. So yeah, I was gonna say going to the states and taking all the money and stuff like that, right? Yeah, they get a little say, bit funny well, about that. They're not supposed to talk about it. It's like <laughs> they're yeah. like, no, I don't go down there. <laughs> well, the, yeah, the one time that I went up to Canada for a horseshoe contest years ago, like they saw us with tools and stuff in the bed of the truck, and they were worried like we were going up there to like make money and all this stuff, and it was a huge ordeal, and they almost didn't let us across. Oh yeah, well, my buddy like Randy Broussard, like he ended up in a jail cell one time because uh, we were going down for a practice. Because like I think we had a Kentucky team that was like, yeah, me, Randy, and then a couple of guys from the states, and so we go down there and uh, we're at the border, and then they're like, oh well, what are you doing down here? Oh, just visiting friends. I don't, I don't know why he said that, but then they're <laughs> he's in his stone well. We got all our shit back there. It didn't take him much very long to pull us over and go through all the stuff. Like, well, he pulled the sledgehammers, and then yeah, he's in a jail cell, and I'm sitting there waiting. <laughs> oh my god, it's not sus at all. <laughs> it, we got let off with a warning, but um, yeah, it wasn't a very comfortable experience. Yeah, they take it pretty serious. Like for some yeah, they reason, do. Like, they really, they really like yeah. Canada's. Canada's pretty locked down. Like, yeah, they really. Yeah. They aren't letting you fuck around up there too much at all. It's uh, pretty funny. Well, when you're in a jail cell, it's serious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so do you get to go out and work with your dad very much now? Uh, I kind of just run my own uh, business for like since, I guess, like 2019 or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. He chews a lot of horses. So if I was working for him, like it's very hard to get in the shop. And when you do, you're all tired and beat up and stuff like that. So I kind of run things a little easier on myself. And I'm just kind of a one-man operation. Like, he has, like, a couple of apprentices and stuff like that. So, like, I don't know, a good day for me is, like, maybe, like, 8 till 2. And then from yeah. get home around 2.30 or something like that. And then just go in the shop if I have something coming up. But yeah. I have my dad to be, like, yeah, like, 7 till 7, eat dinner, Jeez. and then go to the so shop it's almost the rest like of the night and wake up, do it again. 
So you you learn from just like being around him and growing up with him, like two different ways that you could run a business where you could just slam on yes. a ton of horses or you could long, you know, be in it for the long haul. Yeah. And he's, he's always been like that. He, he just loves shoeing horses. Like he still does like the same amount of numbers as uh, when I was working for him. And he's like, yeah, 71 now, I think. Sheepers. So yeah, he, he loves awesome. doing it. And uh, even when, like, he was competing a lot more, uh, like, it's in the, the 90s, like, he was on the team a couple of times, and, yeah, he still just always did the same amount of the numbers. I remember he was saying that, like, some of the guys like James Pindler were, were telling him that, uh, like, if you want to, like, take the next step, make it, like, top 10 at Calgary, you got to drop, like, 40% of your work. And he's like, oh, I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not happening. Like, no. So there's this thing called money I like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, Travis, uh, kind of a question that we like to ask our uh, guests on the show is the yep. Mount Rushmore. And so I kind sure. of want to ask you who are four people that you would like hold in a high regard that you respect and have gotten you to where you are now. Well, definitely, like, my parents, I would say, like, both my mom and my dad, like, they've been, like, my biggest supporters and stuff. Uh, like, me and my dad, are, we're, like, best buds, you know, like, we've worked together for, yeah, like, I'd say, like, 10 years I was working for him, like, from 2009 to, like, 2019. We got along, like, I'd say, like, most of the time, pretty good for a father and son team. Uh, I've learned a lot from him. My mom's helped me out a ton with everything else. Uh, she helps me run my some of my books and chase people down for money which is very oh, helpful. Nice. <laughs> um, like horseshoeing wise, definitely like I'd say Craig Turnica for me. Um, I remember like the first year going to like the classic, I was on kind of like a fun team with like my dad, Leo Chapman. I think Randy was on that team. And like, this was after like seeing like all the cool stuff Craig was posting. I hadn't seen him in a few years. And I remember like being like starstruck, almost like seeing him. I'm like, man, this guy's like, he's real, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people <laughs> have like that. right in front of me too. <laughs> that was, yeah, it was it's like sure. it's like walking around like when we went to Stonely. I remember walking across like the grass with Craig, and people are like fucking heading from all the tents to him. Like yeah. he's like a, a superstar. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know it is. That's he's he's on a lot of people's lists, man. A lot yeah. of people's Mount Rushmore. Yeah, it's definitely been a huge influence on me. And anytime I talk to him at a contest or any questions he's always been like giving me like a very real response you know whether it's something i wanted to hear or needed to hear you know yep i remember like one time i was practicing just a ton and wasn't really making a whole lot of progress and i asked him like what i could do to like improve and i, I thought he was just gonna say oh you know just practice more practice more but like yeah this answer like was not really what i was expecting but it was what i needed you know he's like oh you just need to like hang around people more you know like when you're at the contest don't just like do the contest and then go get dinner and then just go back to your room like you gotta go to the bar and like talk to some of these people and you get like so much more experience that way right instead of just always being bent over at the anvil and yeah it, it helped a bunch right it really wasn't what i was expecting to hear but it was a great answer for sure yeah um other than that i'd, I'd say like steve dixon for sure as a as another horseshoer, he was a huge influence on me. Super great guy, super positive. Um, yeah, I'd definitely Steve Dixon. It's awesome. How many how many summers did you get to go work for Steve then? Uh, just the one. Just the one. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was a couple months out there, but uh, yeah, it had a huge impact on me as a horseshoer and as a person. So, in your area where you live in, do you have like a lot of guys that you can? get together with and practice with, or are you kind of like at this level or whatever kind of practicing on your own? Uh, like there's a couple guys like Randy's not too far from me. He's not really doing a ton right now. I think he's like pretty busy with his family and stuff like that. Um, there are a couple of guys, but they're a little bit past it. Like, um, like Adam McQueen, Stuart Bruce, these are like really handy guys. They still come out to some stuff, but, um, I think they're, they're kind of just doing other stuff with, with their lives. Right. Um, fucking Stuart Bruce, dude. <laughs> He's a good guy. One of, oh my god, one of my favorite people. <laughs> yeah. He is a fucking riot, dude. I want like, at the contest I did in Ontario, dude. He does it, I guess, every year where he just like demolishes a table. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> he like is dancing on top of this. Oh, you're thing, telling dude. me. <laughs> this is like, a, like what is he's like a 50 year old man, dude, and he's partying like he's 20. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dude, oh, yeah. he el- he peopled elbowed the fucking table and was <laughs> was back up the next morning ready to rock. Like, John no Cena, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's an animal for sure. That is um, awesome. Then, like, you know, I think like Dan Corkery would probably be like the next closest guy, but he's in Ottawa, so that's about like maybe like a five hour drive. Um, yeah, of just driving, right? Like, I have to go through across like uh, Toronto to get out there. Oh. So, like, sometimes it's just a pain in the ass going through like a big city yeah. like that. So. That kind of sucks. A lot of times we will meet up at like we'll meet up at like Ben Mangas. I think we were gonna try to hit up something this summer for uh, Spruce Meadows. Uh, we're partnered up again, so that'll be good. Yeah, nice. Uh, but lo- locally, uh, there seems to be like some more like younger guys kind of getting into uh, forging and stuff like that. Like this winter, I kind of booked everything pretty heavy uh, Monday through Thursday, and then every Friday was kind of a shop day, and I had like a few people like come into the shop and stuff like that right on a regular basis and it was a lot of fun you know teaching uh oh, yeah teaching the craft and stuff like that just hanging out bullshit and you know it was just it was a good time uh it's show season now so i mean that's kind of uh i'm kind of uh spoken for on fridays now like just shoeing heavily uh but this fall and stuff i'd like to continue doing that no it's it's awesome how much like a, a forge night like just boosts the enthusiasm for everybody oh yeah you kind of see it through like your community, you know, just by one person ho- hosting a forge night, like you almost see like it just explode, you know, and like people just, oh, just gross. more and more people yeah. just start coming in and want to get. Yeah. And then you start like it. building some allies in your area too, you know, like you're not always at war with everyone, you know? Yep. Yeah. No, it's a good deal. More people are willing to tack a shoe on for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so who's your number four? Uh, I would probably say, uh, my grandfather, my nono, my, he's no longer with us anymore, but, uh, yeah, he was a great guy. Um, took me fishing a bunch when I was a kid, stuff like that. Definitely like a, a man's man, you know, from like that generation born in like the thirties or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Don't have very no, many of them cool. left. No. Yeah, came to this country here. like 20 years old with like <laughs> 10 bucks in his pocket, you know? Man, those, yeah, those are the guys that are like, my, and like, you know, never used it as an excuse once, you know? Never yeah. were just like crying in their porridge. They just worked harder and made a life for themselves. Yeah, came here, That's learned it. the language, you know? Like, really? From Italy, he didn't know the language when he came here. He had to learn it. Uh, no kidding. Yeah, had a lot of, uh, had a, yeah, three kids and then we have like, tons of cousins and stuff like that so definitely did well you know man that is yeah a guy to look up to then especially yeah. to have all those grandkids and you still felt like you got some time out of them you know like the guy oh, obviously yeah. like putting it out there work like wanted yeah. to be a good grandpa that's awesome yeah well, man, we've wa- we've watched the sunlight go away from oh, yeah, yeah. Be- back behind you there. It's uh, <laughs> you're three you're three hours ahead of us, so I, I yeah. And it's a busy time of year, so man, I really appreciate you taking your time to hop on here with us. And I know there's some guys that are going to really appreciate. There, I think they're going to get a lot out of this. Like, I think if you're going to Edgewood, or even if you're not, if you're just wanting to learn how to look at a shoe list. This is a good opportunity to look at a shoe list with the judge and say how he'd go about it. I yeah, I think uh, it should be like, helpful. I agree, and uh, thanks again for having me. I mean, I've listened to, like every podcast you guys have put out. I mean, this will probably be like the only one I don't really listen to, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's <thank> always <laughs> yeah, it's weird <laughs> listening to yourself. Man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a strange thing. <laughs> no, I appreciate it a bunch, man, and. Uh, yeah, everybody, if you guys see Travis at the contest, tell him thank you for doing this. And uh, thank you guys all for listening. We'll see you next time. See you guys. Thank you, Travis.